not the most inspiring yeah. subjects, is it? Well, I mean, it's quite not, you know, not always that people watch it at the time, but um, yeah. okay. I think we're live, yeah. Are we? Hi, wow. hey, Toby. Hello, you all right? Hello, hello. Um, so, yeah, I'm Jackie White, Inspirations Positive Living, and I've got Toby Oakley with me this evening. Um, <clears throat> Toby is a really good friend, but he also knows a lot about finance. Um, he's also a marvellous photographer. Um, yeah, DJ, um, just a really lovely guy. Very fortunate to know him. Every event we do, he comes along with his camera and um, he takes some marvellous photos. Um, I haven't talked too much about finance. I know a friend of mine has uh, been around to see you a few times. So, yeah, I think with your knowledge that you looked up and it's not something many give time to, I don't think, um, to look at how the finance is going at the minute. Um, and there is a lot of talk about finance at, as well. I mean, really, I know, I sh but at school, we're not taught really how to live in the world financially, are we? Not really. No, well, it's, it's, no, it's, no, it's, it's, it's difficult. Can you hear me? Uh, I'll take that it's yeah, definitely, is that my um, <laughs> It's definitely been um, environmentally conditioned out of us by design. Mm. And um, mm. I was the same not that long ago, actually. And 2020, when the sort of the, what happened, happened. I realized I didn't have any savings and I was, yeah, but, but I've got dependents, you know, I've got my children and my wife who are relying on me to provide and being a wedding DJ, I was the first to go and the last to come back. So I was like, Oh dear. <laughs> um, what do I do? And I just started looking into finance really. And um, I knew about the economic system and that, that it was pretty dodgy anyway, a few years before that quite a few years um so I started looking into it then I didn't really put too much energy into it and then I really sort of deep dived into it from March onwards really but for, I, th I think it was definitely kind of intuitively given to me because I went through fortunately went through my finances with a fine tooth comb for the first time ever I may add um in I think it's January February and I even went to a, a, a a finance place like a um accountant to go limited in january all oh, right and i sat down with them went through all the details because uh, i'm fed up with paying tax basically and you can kind of um decide when you want to pay tax <laughs> when you're a limited company um obviously legally and yeah a big voice said to me don't do it uh don't do it just forget about it i was like okay and i didn't do it and luckily not being a limited company, especially with no financial company house history, I obviously got helped out by the government, which I wasn't happy with, but it was very much required and appreciated in 2020. But um, as you say, a lot of people are just, they just don't talk about finance. They don't think about finance. Um, I live on a road with a lot of sort of elderly people and I talk to them sometimes about stuff. And I think most people, when it comes to when they've actually got some money, which is not which is quite um, not not such a thing at the moment, <laughs> um, they go to a financial planner who is probably very much as, as much environmental condition through the educational programs to just put it in a nice stock and bond ISA, that kind of thing. And they don't think about anything else, you know, and yeah, it's just the way it is. I mean, and, it, and it, it, at the moment, it is a time where we're at the end of a massive economic cycle, which we can go into in a minute. And everything's all going loopy-loo on a multi-dimensional level. Um, it's all a bit crazy. <laughs> so, so are you saying you didn't look at finance until 2020 or until January of this year? March 2020, I started looking at it, and it's, oh. it's not something you can learn overnight. No um, way, yeah. no. <laughs> so I started looking at gold and silver to start with, and that mm. was that's what I kind of specialise in and I know most about. And then I've moved on to stocks, uh, stock trading, active stock trading, and never really gone into the kind of bonds, And as I've been talking about. Um, it's, it's more what's called contrarian investing. Basically, I look at what everyone else is doing, and normally that's run by the media, such as just um, Bloomberg in the US, that kind of thing. And I do the opposite because <laughs> often what they're telling you to do is what you, 
was probably the worst idea in the world, you know, that kind of thing. So I tell you, the way your mind works, it's quite incredible, really. I mean, you I'd love to be able to understand it, but I don't understand finance. Uh, I've got no interest in it. That's the thing. If you've got That's an interest, it's yeah. so much easier, isn't it? Yeah, well, I only got an interest because of through necess necessity, really. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I've got a WhatsApp group where we look at mainly at precious metals, but I go over the market every week and say kind of the big things that have gone on. I mainly look at the US because it's huge. It's, it runs the whole world pretty much. And um, I always start the uh, the video. I try and make it funny. Um, welcome to the, the most boring WhatsApp run up video in the universe <laughs> you know what I mean? and it is it is so boring but you can make boring things fun and i think even it's like going down the gym when you really get into something and you understand it it becomes fun and i get up every morning and i look at the markets and get rundowns and stuff and actually i can't wait Gosh. to switch on my computer now um so, that's know. incredible because about two years ago <laughs> there was a lot of talk about gold and silver yeah. and then you were thinking oh my goodness should you buy gold and yeah. silver but then how could you pay for anything with a with a block of gold or a block of silver or a coin of gold or a coin of silver I don't know why there was such a big thing about going to you know getting that but I mean still people are saying that that is the thing to do is it the thing to do yeah, I believe so. When was that, Jackie? I missed that. Well, I would say about two years ago, because Ellie oh, started ago. talking about, yeah, about the yeah. gold and silver. Well, it wasn't just that, Sarah Williams. There was quite a mm. lot of people saying that was the way to go, get gold and silver. Yeah, we, we can go into what fiat money is in a minute and sort of that kind of thing. But yeah, gold, I think that was probably due to, because that's when I started looking at it. That was due mm -hmm. to when um, the Federal Reserve chairman, uh, he's called Jerome Powell, um started to tighten the uh, money supply and before that point after basically after the 08 crash they basically bailed out the banks and started printing money and um the value of anything really is down to supply and demand so if you if you overprint money um it becomes more and more and more worthless i mean how much did you buy your house for did you because i went to it the other day what that was i couldn't believe it it's like how much did I pay for this yeah. house? Yeah. 71,000. There we go. And it's worth a lot, lot more now, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that is inflation. That's what happens. That's it's nothing to do with the war. Well, it's a little bit, but not much to do with wars or anything. It's down to the supply of money. And what they did in 08, um, sorry, 18 was stop it for a bit. When that every everything went like kind of crashed, basically. So they started yeah. up again. And the reason inflation's gone so so heavily um mainly look well we've seen it coming from 2021 onwards haven't we um that's because Absolutely. they printed well america at least but most other nations as well printed 40 percent of all the money supply ever printed um I, it's probably since 71 maybe a bit maybe early i'm not sure 40 percent of all the money supply ever printed in one year during 2020 and um isn't that amazing and yeah. I mean, um, they they basically dished it rather than dish it out to the banks, they dished it out to the common people, um, you know, us plebs. And what common people do generally when they get given a load of money for free, technically, because a lot of them were just sitting around at home, um, is just spend it on iPhones. They go out to, well, if you're allowed to go out anyway, to um, go out and spend it on restaurants and stuff. That in itself is inflationary. That's what causes inflation. Um, Generally, if the government says we haven't got any money, stop um, stop spending. That's generally or start spending. They make you spend. That's it's usually the opposite of what they what they want. It's because the stop spending. It's because they've got too much money and the deficit's too high. Um, I, I might be going into too much detail here, so let me know. Yeah, I was just <laughs> thinking. I mean, I'm a bit lost now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, yeah. so um, inflation is caused by money printing, and in 2020. They absolutely just use the governments use that as an excuse just to print as much as they could, basically to keep everyone dumbed down and happy. So there wasn't any civil unrest. That's my opinion anyway. And um, that's speculative. I'm not I'm not a global finance or global politician, but I see things intuitively and on a very simple helicopter level. I kind of often bring it down to kind of schoolyard human behavior or maybe just an office block you know that kind of thing and it's it's so simple 
finance and global economics is so simple and it uh, the markets as well i mean i love i love the markets because it, it seems just like a chart to most people but it, everything is all just human emotion and a lot of it revolves around greed and fear so yes i totally get that and there's also a lot of talk about the banks collapsing yeah i don't know that that do you believe that could happen yeah definitely and I mean, we saw it in 2022, I think, the um, the bond market in the UK, which is also called GILT. By the way, my dad used to be a GILT uh, tra trader, not trader, he used to run a whole firm in the stock exchange. Um, that almost crashed and burnt. And that, the GILT market is massive. It's a huge bond market. It's the biggest market in the whole world. And it was very nicely brushed up, quite nicely with the Bank of England. And they started quantitative easing or modern money whatever they call it now mmt it's basically fraud um they started printing again after tightening the reason it happened is because they tightened they stopped the money supply um, whereas america has tightened since 2022 because um and that's caused all the banking problems not all of them but it's caused banks issues and i can go into detail why if you want me to <laughs> I think we more or less what we want from to know from you, if mm. the banks are going to collapse, what should we do with our money if there's any money in the bank? Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's whether it will collapse or not. And different banks, certain banks will collapse, certain banks won't. But no one really knows how deep the web goes and how much everything's all inter intertwined and connected. Um, and I mean, for example, like, um, what is it? The, the bank got the name of it the bank like the big bank that crashed in 08 that had 30 times leverage which basically means all the money that it has in it's using it's times it's just made it up 30 times and um yeah oh, lehman brothers sorry so yeah bank banks i'd go quickly into it the reason the banks there's three banks that crash there's silicon valley there's um there's Credit Suisse, and then there's the other one, which I can't remember, I wrote it down somewhere. Oh, Silvergate, I always forget that one. Th those three crashed, and Credit Suisse is just full of crooks. It's got a really dodgy history, and it was going to crash anyway. I was watching, so that's that. you can just kind of ignore that one. Silvergate crashed because of a crypto um, kind of middleman called FTX. But Silicon Valley, that crashed because it basically put all of its customers' money into long-term treasury bonds, which had very low interest rates at the time in 2021, I think, or maybe 2020. So basically the money supply was then stopped, interest rates went up and they couldn't afford it. So they went bankrupt. It's really simple. And it's they didn't manage their risk. And there was a lot of other banks that were a little bit dodgy. That's why all the banks went down, even Barclays Bank and NatWest. Um, a lot of that was fear, though, fear driven. Um, so there is a real reason, there is a real threat the banking system could collapse. And I personally, personally think it's going to be a controlled demolition of the, some of the banks anyway. Um, so they can swoop up all, all little ones uh, in America, anyway, with the regional banks and just put them all into one great big bank like Citigroup or um, JP Morgan, that kind of thing. So. Um, so if you've got any money in the bank, are you wise to take it out? It just depends on how much you got. <laughs> so I, I'm a big believer of spreading things around and, and limiting risk. So you hedge, basically, that's what it's called. It's not like an mm. actual hedge. Uh, <laughs> they could, mm. You could spend it on garden centres. Um, so, I mean, I, I do agree with gold and precious metals, but I also agree with spreading it to other, other places that where you can hold your wealth. Gold's brilliant because it does actually, it's a store of value. It tracks inflation, but it doesn't pay you anything um, as opposed to buying a house and renting it out or investing into a business and making a profit or buying a dividend stock on the stock market. That will also accrue in value if you time it right. I don't agree. I don't, um, if you don't know what you're doing, I wouldn't go down that route. <laughs> um, there's tons of things. I mean, I've got, I've, I haven't got much money myself because I spent, I cocked up my tax return um, from 2020 onwards, but that, that's not going to last forever. But I buy bottles of rum, that I, a four square rum, which is you know, 100 quid a pop. 
um but they will accrue in value you know i've got I've quite a few bottles now and uh really? but yeah i've got a whole, whole cupboard of them but um at the end of the day in 18 years time if they're not if i've not gone up much i'm just going to drink them on my son's 18th birthday weddings that kind of thing so um you can't do that all you can do with a block of gold is look at it, at it or chuck it at, at a thief or something or use it as a doorstop <laughs> So, but what could you do then if you're buying gold and silver hmm. as it is gold and silver or you can buy it onto a card yep. um so you've got the value of the gold and silver but on a card is that yeah, kind of. is that perhaps the way to go i mean what for ev the everyday person such as me yeah what would you do you know well I, I i mean i'm a gold dealer but i'm 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 not a very good gold dealer because i often recommend people not to buy gold um, I mean, I've had probably about 20, 30 chats with people, often in person, we have lunch and stuff, and I go through everything they've got. And then by the end of it, I'm like, well, actually, you don't need any because you've got a seven bedroom house paid off. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Um, and if we, unless we see Nasara just Sarah, um, it's still going to be worth a, a, an amount to some extent, probably more technically, that's the way things have gone. Um, but with gold, I always that's say that's the thing, Nasara Jasara. You yeah, just touched we'll on that. A lot of people won't even know what that is. No, no. Uh, we'll and do you think that's definitely happening? I don't know, but um, I'll go go down that road in a minute because I've I've sort okay. of I can see it linked in with other things. Not so much Nasara Jasara, but a move to 5D. Um, but yeah, with gold, I always recommend you on, on a usual term, most portfolio managers will say you have at least five percent gold um physical gold is the best thing you can have because you have it in physical you can buy it in the stock market but a lot of that is an etf it's an exchange traded fund and it's basically backed on by nothing it's just paper gold um unless you buy there are some etfs like sprock physical metals and you can buy that and I, I, i've got courses on how to get onto the platforms and how to use it and navigate it and what to buy and stuff like that um uh, you said about the card. I think you talk about Glint, aren't you? Yes, Glint. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Um, I wouldn't put all your money in Glint because it's a private company and they do run through public, well, pu private and central banks and the, the same systems. So, um, yeah, I, I, it, you, I, I like a spread of everything. I mean, I've got ETF at the moment in gold. I've got a gold mining ETF, which has 48 miners. That's called the GDX. And um, I've got physical gold like this. So, and what is ETF? Don't worry about that. Exchange traded fund. It's just a, it's it's a thing on um, when you buy stock. Basically, you can buy a stock with uh, um, that ties itself to gold. The, the spot price okay. of gold. The spot price is what it costs at any one moment to the next. Um, that's a gold coin. Let me see. Nice. A, a Victoria. It's very nice. And I, I mean, you don't need you don't need much. I mean, what I would suggest is it all depends on what your personal wealth is. Um, I mean, I, I would suggest if you have, if you've got twenty grand kicking around, or maybe a hundred or two hundred, um, put at least ten percent, if not fifteen. I mean, if you're really if you really know what you're doing, twenty at the moment. I mean, I wouldn't have said that five years ago, um, because gold is gold. A gold, if you didn't know, only is only ever created in a supernova. And that's when a galaxy is formed. So that's the only time gold, gold's um, formed. I think they've kind of done it in a nuclear reactor, but it's actually like radioactive and it's not that great. So you don't really want to put that under your pillow. Um, <laughs> so, but um, whereas uh, and diamonds can just be created in, it, it, all it is is carbon and, and pressure and heat. Um, so this is a, I, 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 I find it so fascinating. That's a little half sovereign. That's pure gold. That's 24 karat. There you go. Oh wow! Um, look how similar this looks to that. That's a one penny piece. Do you know what I mean? Wow. Um, there's no fluke they've done that, is it? It's to make this look cheap, um, in my opinion, anyway. So yeah, um, cash. You could always have cash, um, but I mean, holding cash. Oh, I've got out of focus, but oh well. Holding cash on the eve of what is potentially going to be the biggest crash in history. Um, everything is, it's called the everything bubble for a reason. Property is the highest it's ever been. Stock market's the highest. It's still going up, despite it, the cost of living stuff and, and all that. And um, 
it's always like this, like in 08, there's there's a certain type of graph, which is called, it's, you got fear, um, greed and stuff. And there's always a little bit up and then it crashes down. And I do think we're at, and everyone else actually thinks we're at that point where we're going to suddenly see a huge deleveraging event, possibly sparked by a black swan, which is like China invading Taiwan, a fate um, alien invasion, that kind of thing, which, by the way, is on the cards uh, in some respects. Um, and you said I'm, that for about two years about the fake alien yeah, yeah, invasion. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it, it's all coming out. I, we, I mean, that's not that's not relevant. Don't worry. But it no, is, no. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. What I do is I'm a trader. I like tangible stuff. Um, as much as I go spirit go to the spiritual side, I also like proof of of that. And um, yeah, it's all, they're, you, they're actually justifying think, it all. I so. think with you, you do know all of the rabbit hole, but you don't go into it because there's no need for you. No, no, you no. are like, yeah, you are staying level headed on the what we need to know. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. With the alien stuff, that's they're just it's all coming out in the media now. That whereas five years ago, it'd be like crazy alert. This person's seen a UFO now. It's like, oh, actually, the Pentagon's actually admitting. <laughs> anyway, um, so let, should we go into fiat currency? Because that's the key. Because everyone thinks this is money. Lovely. I think I've, yes, Brilliant. I've focused myself. I think kind of. Oh, I can <laughs> see thinks, that clearly, yeah. Everyone thinks this is money. And yes, it is money. But it's only, um, uh, it's only a currency. And it's called a fiat currency. And... Fiat, all fiat currencies in history have crashed and burned over a period of time. The reason it's called a fiat currency is it's not backed by anything. It's only backed by thin air. And we've just been brought up and conditioned to think that that is valuable, where it is, it is not valuable. Well, it, it is a little bit because you can actually buy things at the moment. But the worth and value of anything is only dependent on the other person who wants to buy something from you. Um, this mm -hmm. is a German Weimar Republic mark, and it's um, nine million marks. And that was, I don't know if you know, that was in the 1920s, 1923, when Germany went to hyperinflation, which is like the inflation we've got at the moment, um, and in Venezuela at the moment, which has gone up 65,000% um, in the space of a few years. Um, that was during hyperinflation. So this was worth something at one point, and then suddenly it's worth nothing and actually i think someone bought a whole house from one ounce of gold as a silver eagle back then um and you can buy anything you want in venezuela with enough gold and probably silver um so the reason it, it's um isn't worth anything is because it used to be backed by gold i'm, I'm just going to talk about the americans really because the dollar is the key to everything um they had a conference am i talking too much or do you want to ask questions no there was a really loud helicopter so i just oh, muted I didn't hear that. myself for oh, okay. a minute <laughs> i didn't know um they had a conference called Bretton woods in 1944 in america where basically they agreed to peg the dollar to the gold and that was then the reserve currency for the whole of the world britain used to be that um so the dollar was king it's like yay as good as gold and um, prior to that, actually, which shows how far governments plan in advance or whoever runs the government, let's say, um, in 1933, uh, Roosevelt, who's president then, banned all, all ownership of gold. Can you imagine that? He basically confiscated everyone's gold in America. He then pumped up the price of it and then came out with Bretton Woods in 1944. That was after the Great Depression, of course. And... Um, yeah, it's amazing. So that was then as good as gold. And then what ha started to happen, everyone, all the nations didn't trust America um, for obvious reasons, especially, you know, after what some of the things they have done, you know. Um, yeah. And President Nixon took, I think it was France that was sort of demanding the gold, basically. Okay, here's your dollars, can I have some gold? President Nixon, 1971, then took the, for the first time ever, took it off the gold standard and just like that that was well the dollars or whatever was worthless um so yeah so and it's been the and what a lot of people don't realize is these cycles take a long time to play out everything's a cycle from the the weather to the universe to um my wife's well not any woman's body you know um it's all cyclical and it's all on a vibrational frequency as you know 
and we're at the end of that cycle at the moment and a lot of people are oh you said it crashed last year i'm like well what's a year you know it's been like 50 70 years or something like that um so yeah that's what's happening and we'll go into the qf you know, quantum financial system in a minute which is where we're leading which is where we're going um that's i wasn't so, so sure. what are we saying about cash though toby do um, we it's up to you um i wouldn't have all your money in cash i certainly wouldn't have it all in the bank um and i, I had an email from that west the other day i changed all the terms and conditions and basically they're using um we're trying to counteract fraud and um criminal activity so you're only we're going to basically question you and grill you on every piece every time you want to take out a certain amount of money and that's been the I case do. Everyone that's bought gold off me, I mean, I've got through about 10 grand worth of gold the other day. Everyone that's bought it has been quizzed and questioned. And that could that could get very bad very quickly. Now, they're blaming us. Um, but I know, because I understand banking and I understand finance, that it's their problem. Because what they've done is taken however much, let's say you put in 100 grand. What they'll do is keep 10, 10 to 13 percent of that on average and then loan the rest out or buy, as you saw with um, Silicon Valley, they'll buy bonds or they'll loan it out to more speculative, which means risky um, endeavors, like even like not so much Bitcoin, but the NASDAQ, let's say in 2020, which was on a rip, uh, which is basically holds all the tech stocks and stuff like that. So what happens? What happens then if people get scared they'll go right i want to get my money out and if enough people do that which happened just prior to the great depression in america in the oh, i think it's 28 or something like that they've got no money left and they go bankrupt which i find very funny <laughs> um it's quite ironic so yeah that's that's really the reason why and on that note a lot of banks i feel like i'm talking a lot i do apologize i'm just like Faye, aren't i <laughs> um a lot of a lot of banks um uh, they, they've been buying a lot of gold, especially last year, um, to basically hedge for the, the situation that they've created. It's so it's just hilarious. You can't make it up. Um, well, as I, I said, they're like heard, a load of school kids. I had heard they were buying a lot of crypto back when crypto, you know, a couple of years ago, three years ago. Um, they said once you find out the banks are buying the crypto, you know it's worth buying the crypto. But yeah. now I hear it's not worth getting crypto. I don't understand crypto. I've never looked into it. Yeah. Um, but obviously, I know a lot of people have made a lot of money from crypto. Yeah. So, you know, there's so much we, I don't know. Oh, it confuses me. Yeah. It's new. They say cash is king. Like if you do need to keep the cash or else if if like they're going to lose their jobs aren't they if, uh in the stores i guess if you're not using cash you don't need cashiers um yeah yeah know. i don't know you know it's so i always queue up at a pl where there's a cashier so that you're not doing it yourself and that's keeping them in a job hopefully i don't know if that's well, well i think i'm going to talk about that in a minute with regards to kind of um, no offense to you but ludditeism um and looking at the moment rather than looking at the bigger picture um like the 10 20 years um but i totally get what you say and i, I mean i've got i've got i'll watch of it here look um very uh, nice i've got i've got physical cash i've got cash in a bank um not too much mind you i've got cash in a trading account i've got cash I've, and, and i've got three different banks um and i've got some money fiat money spread around a few different places there's quite a few people on my group actually a lot of people i meet that have bought premium bonds as well and they are actually getting they've put the maximum amount in which i believe seventy thousand, and they are actually getting prizes and stuff so it's kind of paying a wage although it's probably not tracking inflation and cash in a bank certainly doesn't track track inflation um unless it's at the inflation rate which i believe is it 6.5 or something i don't know um england um you're basically losing on your money every year you've got it there if it's not earning you a decent income of some sort or a dividend or mm. a yield or it's accruing in value um so cash is king and if you've got enough cash and you can time it right and you want let's let's say it all goes free fall the banks will crash it's like whoa okay right um if you've got cash you can go and buy someone's house five bedroom house for 
potentially half the half of what it's valued at the moment but is that right is it you know is it the right thing to do i'm not sure um and i've i've written about the sort of 5d mentality with regards to money and previous lives and the the vibrational frequency that's attached to it and i feel the same actually about uh, uh bitcoin crypto that whole space and it's generally always very um fearful eyed young men that are trying to sell something and they, and they talk really fast and they're all like ah. um, and it makes me wonder how happy they are what's their life like and they're probably all single and probably mir- miserable when they get off the, they might have all their rolex watches and stuff they bought with all their crypto winnings but are they happy that's the key and i mean at the end of the day if worrying about something before it happens the fear of the unknown is very powerful and often like just look at 2020 if i describe that to you in 2019 you think oh my god um but we're through it to some extent and it wasn't that bad and actually with when you've got duality with negative and positive you can meet in the mute in meet in the neutral zone and you need the negative as well as the positive to be there so it needs to exist at once so that's well yeah you need to know what sadness is to know yeah. when you're happy yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah and often if i think things are bad i often look at a book by victor frankel called a man's search for meaning i got i've got it on my shelf and just you know i think mm, it's not that bad he basically was in his concentration camps all his family wife kids got murdered and he was one of the last ones to survive and his book is about the psychology of the concentration camps and how he got out of being um, murdered basically by using psychology with the guards, with the, with the bosses, the capos that ran, you know, cause there was a hierarchy obviously and that that's human nature mm-hmm. that just happened. Um, so yeah, so with, yeah, crypto, I don't know, um, blockchain. That's not something you've ever gone into crypto. Yeah, I did. I bought, um, well, I saw Ethereum actually at 175 quid. I don't know what it went up to, 6,000 or something um and it was too i just didn't feel right actually it didn't feel right and then i got in on a blockchain stock argo blockchain when it was bitcoin hits sixty eight thousand dollars and i knew i was making the wrong decision and it's uh, it's now sitting in my trading account at minus 89 percent or something um i at the same time i bought litecoin and arda which is i can't remember what's what the cardano which Cardano is one of the main ones now, and it's probably gone shot up quite a bit. Um, but it didn't feel right. And I just, I thought, I don't like this. And I sold them. And I haven't bought anything, anything to do with Bitcoin, but I look at it every day. Um, <laughs> yeah, so um, I'm not sure, really. I'm going to buy it if it hits 12,000 to 8 to 12,000. But even then, I still don't. I mean, basically, our whole life. Up. Sorry. Basically, our whole life is controlled by money, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And I've just finished that off because I've done a book, as you can see. I just I literally wrote a book in the last two days, as you know. Um, um, uh, it's it's about five 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 and a half thousand words, but it, it runs through everything we've discussed, starting with basically bar- the barter system all the way through to, to cryptology, blockchain, and also spirituality and money. That's kind of where, I, where I've ended um, at the moment. But I don't know. Um, Put the link for that after this under yeah, yeah, this sure. video. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. I, I've Amazing managed... that you've done that. I, I need. I just. I felt like I needed. This. As you know, I kind of don't do a lot until I get told to do something, and then I crack on with it. <laughs> that's the best exactly, way. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, and I was actually said in the beginning. Well, of my you pro- should have joined. You should have joined last night for the human design. Oh, I wow. would be so fascinated to hear what your breakdown of your personality is because that would be really interesting oh, okay I'll, yeah I'll talk to you about that that's interesting yeah I didn't I'm sorry I do miss a lot I'm sorry Jackie um I don't know oh, but I, don't, I mean he was really interesting yeah I don't follow a lot of other stuff that's going on um because generally I'm doing my own thing um yeah. and as you've said yourself I don't like exposing myself to too much because I get a lot intuitively and I don't if I need to know something it will come to me um, that's my yes. big thing anyway but I do like your your videos and stuff with the people you choose so I just need to 
I, I, I don't yeah, know. No, honestly, I, I it. it was huge. <laughs> yeah, it was human design and it okay. was very, very interesting. Anyway, it's on the website now. Okay, cool. But um, yeah, I'll talk to you about that because I'll pull your human design chart off cool. to see what yeah. you are. Oh, that's cool. That'd be quite interesting. I'm a number one numero numerology key. Numerology Kelly. So that's the word. <laughs> that's what Faye reckons. Um, where were we? I've forgotten. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yeah, we were talking about the book and I'll put the link after this. Yeah. Where were we before that? Uh, well, we, cash is king. Then we said crypto. Um, yeah, we want really from this um well we're also talking about 5d and what it's going to be like so jasara and asara is it, that going to come it's about such a difficult oh that's where i was going such a difficult i'm in a bit of a quandary because i'm like kind of coaching people on well, they'll just well not even that just chatting to people about um finance and stuff but then i'm also on the other side doing stuff with the 5d um so i'm in, I'm in kind of a weird space and i think i'm supposed to be here to help people and as I've said most of the time, it's just I'm just here to calm people down and like explain things in plain English, because I do think by design it's it's meant to seem quite, um, like quite. Well, no, I'm never going to work that out. But actually, it's it's complicated. Yeah, it's not. It's easy. And um, I mean, I've had someone the other day actually come to me. We had a lovely meal at Nova Cafe and dipped and Perlu, and um, I ended up just saying cause she's very she's worried about like kind of. The stuff on online and she, she couldn't sleep for, for various reasons and i said you know what i don't think you need any gold or silver i think what you need is just to go somewhere and just on your own for a week <laughs> Tell me, have a sleep and then get your thoughts together because when you're in a place of fear as you i said before it, it, you can be fearful of like what we're talking about total oh my god i'm gonna lose all my money and then you could be fearful of um oh my god i'm gonna die because i'm walking next to someone it's all the same thing. It's all fear. It doesn't matter which which side you're on. It, fear is fear, and love is love, and compassion is the same thing. But um, so the, I think the best thing in terms of what I'm trying to get through to people and myself, trying to teach myself about, is just trying to take a step back and um, turn all your stuff off, especially your telegrams, and just chill. Mm. Um, but before you do that, it's, it's not it, just try and educate yourself. Don't go to a financial advisor. Don't go to um, your gurus and your insider people online because they're going to, especially if they're selling your silver. I mean, that's just it's in their interest to rip you off or that maybe they maybe they're trying their best to be um, transparent. But often the stuff they come up with doesn't ever happen. I've heard a lot of stories from people I know of like, oh, the bank's going to crash on this date. This is going to happen then and that, that, that. And it never has, it hasn't transpired to happen yet. So, um, I mean, what the best you can do is just go and breathe, go in the, and listen to this. Or, or if, if I'm going to reverse, but that. <laughs> um, listen to your intuition, listen to your heart, and then come back, breathe and make a decision based on that. And if you need to prepare prepare you know um, but do it neutrally just um, learn as much as you can and get you know some silver nice block of silver there um get some gold as i've shown you so when you've got that what would you do with it toby uh, <clears throat> there's different ownerships of gold one of which is, is in person and you get a decent safe um maybe at a friend's house even or, or a family member's house so then it's you don't have it don't tell anyone <clears throat> You can have gold, as I've said, the glint card. I don't I don't run with that, but that's up to you. Um, I say just try and educate yourself. Um, you can have actually have gold held or silver held in the bullion vaults from the bullion dealers, which you can just go online and find a bullion dealer. Um, I'm a dealer, by the way, and I can get I can match any bullion price. Um, I can beat any bullion price. Um, and I don't hold it, though. For you. <laughs> um, they either hold it in their vaults, which is quite handy. She was silver because you have to pay VAT on silver. You don't have to do that with gold. And, um, but you don't own it. So do you know what I mean? Um, and if, when you sell it back to them, they'll charge you a huge fortune and it won't be the rate you could get if you sold it directly to someone. Um, and I've mentioned the other versions of gold, which will be on the stock market. And there's one I didn't mention. You can buy into, I did, I did kind of buy into stock, um, buy stocks, which would be like a gold mining business. 
Um, and I'm not going to go into that on this video. <laughs> I'm just going to stop you there. Whip. Yeah. So you've got a block of gold or a block of silver. Yeah. What can you possibly do with it if they buy it back at a lesser price? What's the point of having it? Well, the, I mean, the idea is to, to you buy it at a decent time when it has a dip. Um, you can cost average buy into it, which makes sense to me. Never, never put all your money into something straight away. Um, I've, you know, I made that mistake with that um bitcoin stock and i mean I, I wait i haven't bought any gold no actually i bought some the other day i bought this one um but i haven't bought any gold since 2021 and that's when it was really cheap and you know and it could potentially <clears throat> could potentially get a lot cheaper again silver's becoming cheap again so i might buy some more silver um but i'd always recommend gold to start with and a little bit of silver um but if you've got it and then what will you do with it if once it goes up in value you'll sell it <clears throat> ideally but it's as i've said it, it's it's just the same as it's a hedge and it will it gold generally will track inflation and if it's a hedge against social unrest and a few years ago people would laugh at me now they're like well actually that could happen we could hit civil war we could be invaded you know this that the banks could collapse alien invasion um you mark my words um <laughs> and uh yeah so th that's what it's there for it's, just, it's no different to having insurance policy in your house insurance policy in your car you don't ever expect to crash your car but it can happen you, your house might burn down you don't expect it to happen but it can happen that's what gold is there for it's not there to be traded or you can to make money um but i mean i i sold all my gold actually in march they can be traded because i bought it a lot of it in 2021 i sold almost all of it in march because it hit all-time highs um but i know what i'm doing i know who to sell it to and i knew that it was based on fear because the mind uh, we won't go there but it was based on fear and an emotional reaction often doesn't last long like you look at all the flags that are out for ukraine you know, they've all been taken down haven't they so Lovely, and, oh, well, yeah, and, and when, when everyone just switched off like overnight from the lockdowns and that oh that's done right let's move on to a war now <laughs> But, yeah, yeah. So, what? Um, um, so, if you've got some money and you yep. want to invest, what would you suggest then is the best thing? Depends on, as I've said, it depends on the individual. But um, I would certainly, at the moment, buy some gold, physical gold, keep it in person. Then, then think about a bit of silver. Um, silver is extremely cheap, but it hasn't changed really in price from its all-time highs in the nineteen seventies which is when it was artificially bumped up by people called the Hunt Brothers. Um, and there's a lot of like these gurus and these insiders, they keep saying, oh, it's going to it's going to break out. It's going to go to two thousand dollars or what, or two hundred dollars, which is actually quite probable because possible because this is this is silver. And it's it's only at the moment 18 pounds an ounce, which is unbelievable, whereas gold's at one thousand five hundred and nine or something. Um, for an ounce yeah yeah 1509 or 10 or this something is, like that yeah this that's it. pounds yeah God. Uh, i mean this is this is 400 quid it's a queen victoria wow. so, um normally or by the way normally i wouldn't be handling silver and gold or gold the newer gold stuff i wouldn't be handling silver but this is my kind of it's my my, my precious <laughs> i'm not a bit like Gollum at times if you if you catch me in late at night i'm sat there like like that <laughs> and it is precious as i've said it's only ever created in a supernova there's something special about gold and a lot of precious metals and obviously and as you know crystals um you know i mean this is i love this beautiful beautiful yeah it's got a nice back as well I yeah, look at it every day. you know and there is something precious and as you know everything has a vibrational frequency and to some degree or another consciousness a lot of which we can't fathom um like trees or whatever uh and yeah, this, and this, I mean, a lot of, I mean, you look at any ancient tribe, especially in the Americas, they'd have gold all over them. The Egyptians covered everything with gold. Um, yeah. It, it, this is a very spiritual, probably one of the most spiritual items we can find on this planet, in my opinion. Um, I could be proved wrong there because I'm not really an expert on um, gems and stuff, but yeah, so. I've totally gone off. A so in left. general, yeah, no, in general, well, this talk that you, you know, we wanted to do, um, yeah. 
what is the general reason for it? What are we trying to say is best for people? Um, to not live in fear because there's yeah. so much talk about the banks crashing. So you don't have everything in one place. Yeah. And then there's, I mean, at the end of my book, I talk about spirituality and, and consciousness and is this actually all real or is it designed to pull us into fear? That, that, that's oh, then, actually, that, when you start getting the head head messing up, I'm not going to say the other word. Um, <laughs> and then then I go in even deep saying, well, actually, is there an outer, is there an outer world or am I actually creating all of this? I'm here, you know, I've channeled you to be here right now. And... Um, and if I actually do believe that um, Mr. Schwab's going to come around my house and we're going to have a plan to create a load of five actual 5D positive schools for the whole world, that could happen, you know. Well, my friend, Mr. Gates here, where is he? There in the background. You know, I can't see Mr. Gates. You said He's that there. earlier, but I can't <laughs> see him. Bill is in there, yeah. That's why my eyes is are a bit he? funny. I, mean, I, I brought him some bread early and he tried to punch me, but it's such a feeble git. Didn't give me a black eye. <laughs> <laughs> do you um, have a robot i'll well? just tell you i saw that what's yeah. that in aid of that's my um attack droid just in case someone wants to break into my basement so oh, very but good. he felt a bit um aggressive earlier so he went down dibton um charity shop and bought himself a dress and a and a, and a hat to yeah. soften him up a bit yeah i'll tell you this just for what happened the other day um I bought two tickets to go and see, I think on Telegram, she's called Stacy's. Oh, state. Anyway, she's all about not paying any bills. Yeah. She So she's saving you money. Stacy's World Rocks, I think it's called, on um, Telegram. And so a friend of mine recommended that I join this. Um, and she doesn't take any nonsense, this girl. And she keeps posting about how much she saved people because if they're refusing to pay their bills um, and and they she sort of tells you how you've got every right not to pay your bills. Mm. And so I booked two tickets because, I mean, I agree, when, you know, when I'm agreeing with people when they say, oh, no, I'm not paying my bills anymore. Um, I think brave them, but I'm not brave enough to do that. I still pay my bills. And... Um, so I thought I'll go to her talk. It's in Bristol, um, yeah. but I'll go and listen to what she says and how she can, you know, make you feel OK about not paying your bills. Because I did stop paying my electric and gas and the bill, it was going up in such, you know, like at the end, you know, you're going to have to pay it. Or I believed I was going to have to pay it. So I thought I can't carry on like this, start paying it again. Um, so. Then I said to AJ, I've got two tickets for this. I thought he'd really enjoyed going to that, to His listen to that. Over, he, said, Jackie, he said, Jackie, we're moving away from money. There's not going to be a need. We're going to be into um, cooperation, you know, so I'll give you some tomatoes and you give me some honey. You know, that sort of, um, it's going to be more like that old way of, um, so I thought, wow. And I was really wound up about having to drive to Bristol to this event anyway, because, I mean, I'm not, you know, I don't mind driving, but not that far. And um, so actually, I'm not going to go. So I've got the two tickets if anyone wants them. Um, okay. But, yeah, he's absolutely right. Yeah. He said, so, yeah. no, I'm not going to go to that, that because yeah, she, she's just winding everybody up to not pay their bills um but that's because we're so focused in this money world yeah um we're so controlled by money um and he said we're we are moving away from that we're not going to be caught up in this fear mongering um all about money thing yeah just live your life and enjoy your life yeah i and don't know where you stand with that but I, I don't, it yeah, was really exactly. good for me yeah, yeah, and uh, I mean, if you've got a load of bailiffs, we I, I mean, I sat through an hour or whatever, um, listened to a story about a bailiff the other day. And if you've got these bailiffs coming in your house and personally attacking you in your own sanctuary, it's not good. Which they've got and, no right to do. Well, did, did, that's the point. You're getting, you, you, you know, you can get angry on that. And um, the best scenario is just to, like, kind of, I don't know, avoid it and just, I, I mean, I'd rather pay i'd rather pay things and forget about it than have yes. that energy in my house you know house especially yes. children 
Um, I would probably think, oh, yeah. to be fair, if, if they broken. I mean, I've got a friend who did just that. He, she didn't pay her bills. And um, yeah, and he, he got a locksmith, broke into her house. She was in the shower. He stood in her um, bedroom and um, didn't pay anything. But she was going on the advice of someone like this girl that you're talking about. And she got into such a mess and had to sell the house and this, that and the other. Bailiffs coming in, then the bailiffs actually came into her, the other another house that she was in, because they'd obviously tracked her down. And um, yeah, it is designed to suck you in, I think, money. And it's it's so ingrained throughout multiple lifetimes, if you believe in that. Um, yes. throughout your whole of your life. I mean, I was I was I just said in my book, actually, I was, I was staying next to the shard, not in the shard, because I haven't got that much, I wouldn't pay that anyway. Um, but I could see right over London Bridge. I assume it's that is London Bridge, yeah. And um, everyone's coming out of stations. It was like a load of insects, black insects all going over this. And it was kind of like that. So they're all going, all working together. And um, they're, they're just like in the system, you know. And I'm sure none of them want to actually be there. Well, some of them might. No. Um, what, why? What's the point? And I thought, what if every, every single one of them decided to just stay home and create a business based on what they're passionate about they, they could have the yes. balls to do that they might not earn as much if especially if they're investment bankers just making up thin air derivatives from a piece of paper um but they'd be happy you know they, and some of these people might spend some time with their children and what would that do to the institutions if everyone decided to do that and i heard a story actually during the 87 storm there was a load of market orders in the stock exchange going out but because the jobbers at the time it was all analog still <coughs> couldn't get there <coughs> that that contributed to the massive crash that happened i think it's black monday black monday something like that so um a lot of these i mean i know i've also said actually a lot of these big institutions control that control everything like black rock vanguard um you name any bank off yeah and um they have a lot of people in them that are quite decent people even some most of the ceos even of like a lot of the big pharma companies they're nice people that have families they're decent people i do a lot of work for them as wedding djs and five star hotels mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but when they get together and work as with the institution that's when um basically there's no blame for a lot of these individuals that have power um, and that's the same in government same in big pharma um, they can get away with what they want and if you let any child do that they'll run right and it's no different to that basically and there needs to be I'm, I'm hoping actually as we move to 5d that more awareness self-awareness will come through and i'm seeing it happen yes. as we discuss more self-awareness yes. will come through and I, I actually think even even like mr schwab um or mr gates mr gates might actually start farming his farmland for example and i said they, they could actually wake up you never know why not that would not be good so and, we, and as you say i think we will still need money because we're moving into a whole different type not money but a, a, a way of transacting and that yeah will, that will sit in line with what's going on um, i'm not really an authority to speak on it but i've started quite deeply looking into blockchain and how that works and it's quite interesting actually and i'm still very dubious of it and i don't trust it especially bitcoin and um i mean they've already got three i think um cbdc's out at the moment um one's bahamas i think it's called the sand coin or something like that one's uh, nigeria there's another one which i can't remember they probably did that because their currency is crap anyway um but there's ones that are already actively on trial, like in Sweden, China, uh, Ukraine, and somewhere else. And all the rest are in planning for 2026, 2027, possibly 2028. So it's very interesting. Gosh. Yeah, but it will be run on the blockchain, which can be, I think, I think I actually feel, I don't think, I feel that that's quite a good thing. But technology is only as good as the people that control it. And it can be used for nefarious purposes or what could be deemed as positive purposes by myself and you, you know, because um, everything's yes. positive, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I did think, and certainly from what AJ and different ones have been saying, that the um, quantum financial system 
Nasara Jasara, is coming into being very soon. But then again, that's been said for over a year now. I think the, the two are the, the two are different entities. Nasara Jasara is like kind of um as far as I'm aware of it, I'm not an expert, but it's it's the forgiveness of certain debts which are, have been deemed illegal. And I, I think that might be part of the 5D um, thing where people actually get a conscience to some extent or you know, judges actually change their complete personalities. Um, but if debt su- it's, it's suddenly going to come in, what happens if debt gets forgiven? Like more, let's start with a mortgage in the property market. Property will absolutely be worth next to nothing if it suddenly gets for, forgiven, you know? Um, builders will be out of business. The supply chain of all the materials they use will be out of business. And if people want to sell the house, it won't be worth anything. Um, so there's a, lot to, there's a lot to consider rather than just, oh, everything's going to be lovely. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, the point it, of it, it is like a, more, a more fair, where the top 1% of the billionaires in the world run the world, Yeah. It was to have a more balanced, fair system of pay, but yeah. obviously still with structure so yeah. that it didn't go all, because why would you have anyone clearing the bin, bins away from your home if they had no reason to work for money or, you know, but a much fairer, it just sounds like it'd be a much fairer. And that's what we're going into with the golden era, I think, in 2013. Two, yeah, is what we're working towards. I'm, um, I'm, sorry, I'm... no, but that's sort of what I understood the quantum financial system to be like. Yeah, the quantum financial system is a system, um, and it's like it's it's a much, it's more of a less analog version of the digital system we have at the moment. Um, I don't, as I say, I'm not an authority, but it's it's very, what I like about it is people can see what's on, it, it's like having um, a conveyor belt or, or a revolt, let's say, in a bank, which you can't get into, but you can see a glass vault with lots of glass boxes that you can see into. And the people, only people that can access it, the people with keys. And um, yeah, that's as far as I've got. Really. Um, but it, it does seem quite good because it can be used for all sorts of things. Um, and I've, I've said actually like the, it can be used for property properties and stuff like that. Everything's going to get tokenized. Um, and you have to- tokens for different things and stuff like that. Uh, but it's, I was looking at like the, who's going to own your house because your house will be based on the blockchain, which actually would do me good because my solicitors were crap. So hopefully we could get rid of the solicitors. Um, and yeah, it's 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 interesting because actually you'll think, oh my god, I won't own it because it'll be on a blockchain. But I actually, don't own it anyway because the Queen owns it because it's owned by the Crown Estate. Uh, so you, if you well, really she owns look, everything, yeah. If you look yeah. into that, it's like it's just a new way of doing things. That's what I was saying with the Luddite side of things. A lot of people are very fearful of all of this, and I don't blame them because um, owning owning property. I think it was um, George Washington said this: owning property is the if a, someone doesn't own anything, then they don't, they're not free, basically. They don't have any freedoms. Um, a bit like the serfs in the middle medieval times where they just, they, all they had to do was answer to the Lord of the Manor. They couldn't do anything. It couldn't go anywhere. Like, and um, that probably happens to the lower grade citizens in China. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's very, it's, and, and talking about the, thir- the 2032 thing, as much as I respect and love Diana's work, I can't see it personally um, at the moment. Um, like literally just thinking up, a, I want to go on a, into a car. I need a car and it just arrives. Um, I can't see that, but that's probably me. You know, she's, she's been doing this a long time. But as She's a tra- been saying it for the longest time. Yeah, mm. I went to see her over 25 years ago, Diana Cooper, and she yep. said it then. I remembered clearly. She yeah. said 2032 for 20 odd, 25 years ago. And she's still staying to that now at 2032. She said, well, it'd be even before that because we're so in track. But um, I, want her, yeah. I, want, I want her to come back down if she's well, she's probably not going to still be here. But I want her to come back down and see us. And they'll go, you were right. She thinks she is. She thinks <laughs> she right, is going to be here, and I yeah, hope yeah. she is. <laughs> she, she could sort of have a party with Shirley Batty or something. Um, yeah, so I, I, just, I don't know. Um, I'm a trader, and and also even with the spiritual stuff, I, I do see things that uh, I need to see some kind of evidence. 
and bring that in to actually get there but i am seeing people changing you know people in my life are saying things i never ever thought they'd say i say that on all of my videos um i won't go into detail because they might watch this but you know we, we, we have conversations about stuff i never thought of um I never thought I'd be I love it. It just that. opens your mind to a yeah. different thing, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, different ideas. So it's not that we're getting um, any solutions to what to do with your money. It just opens your mind to all what the situation is, um, what can be done yeah. with money um, if you want to keep it all in the bank. Yeah. And it could be fine. We just don't know, do we? Yeah, well, as I've said, there's two things to do. Um just get rid of your belief system about money. And the only way you can do that is really just to educate yourself and take, take, take back the power. You take back the power by learning from the right sources. I can, if you want, you contact me. I'll give you a load of channels that have really good um, non bias content for, for finance. And then chill out, take, take it easy, or basically prepare yourself and then chill out. But the main thing is you just chill out and take it easy and don't live in fear and it's the same with everything because everything's a vibrational frequency the money system pharma system you name it it's all lower vibrational frequencies that yeah. i just that's why i know a lot of stuff about it without even have to read anything because it's so simple like i hear a i hear about a government story i know the reasons behind it you know because they've been doing it they're just repeating something they've tried time and time again because they have no creativity especially when you use humor they can't beat that and satire you know uh, I won't, you know who I mean by who, let's say like reptilians or lower vibrational frequencies, but they all still have to be here to have the higher frequency. And um, I suppose I'm just trying to be in a state of neutrality. So I think if you go one way or the other, it all goes a bit like, woo, do you know what I mean? And that's what we're seeing, like the, the crazy news stories at the moment. Um, How stuff. can anyone get in touch with you, Toby? Um, go to my website. I won't, I don't normally talk this much. <laughs> um, bogfrog.co.uk and that's b-o-g-f-r-o-g -O -O and if you go on the wealth bf wealth section you can actually get a free copy of this book and I, oh, I, well, have, I haven't actually finished it yet and i thought sod it i'm not going to finish it in a hurry and i said in the start i said it's going to have spelling mistakes it's going to have grammar mistakes and it probably will never get finished because I was taught to do that in school. And actually, I think it's perfectly normal to, to constantly change something and update it and have a few mistakes here and there. So. It's really good because it just gets you over that thing about judging. Yeah, doesn't it? You know, like yeah. perfectly imperfect. Well, I apologise. It's just I'm really sorry, but this isn't finished. I thought I actually sod it. I, I worked my ass off. And it's, it, I've done as much as I could <laughs> up to this point. So you can download Brilliant. it in a few weeks or download it now. It's up to you. And on there, Marvelous. if you're interested in any of my services, I do, I've got a WhatsApp group, which is really positive, um, where I just kind of every week I go through what's happened in the markets, whether it's a good time to buy gold and silver and other stuff. We looked into palladium last week, for example, which is another precious metal. And basically just, leaves you time to chill out and enjoy your life and just log in once or twice a week and oh okay great get in contact or buy your goodbye from another deal i don't care um yeah and also do Wonderful. the stock trading stuff as well so i can teach you how to trade stocks and buy investment grade stocks and that's pretty much it i've that's been going lovely. on quite a bit i'm sorry no honestly don't apologize really thank you toby <laughs> Thanks for sharing your knowledge. Um, I'll put the link for that book underneath the this recording, um, which stays on the page anyway. I forgot to press record, so it won't go on the website, but um, great that it's here anyway. Thank you, Toby. Cool. Brilliant. Um, and thanks thank anyone that watched. And if you look through afterwards, there might be some questions or comments. And well, that'd be good. Know, yeah. Please just, I'm very, very easy to contact. Just um, give me a shout anytime. And um, it's kind of nice, um, not, to be, nice. not to be the interviewer, actually. Um, that's probably why I've talked so much. No, I mean, Toby does some marvellous interviews now on Bogfrog, The Alternative. Great What's reset. your name? Great reset. reset, yeah. We didn't touch on that, actually, but...
No. Do you want to say about that just quickly? Not really, no. Um, it's, okay. uh, read the books. Everything's in there. I, 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 I need to add and edit stuff, but the, the, the main things are. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Lots of love. Thanks, everyone. Cool.